Hi, I'm Dr. Aubrey Jaquist. And I'm Dr. Krishana Martinson. I'm the equine extension specialist here at the University of Minnesota, and Dr. Jaquith is a postdoc. And today we're going to demonstrate how to install a high traffic pad inside a dry lot. Dry lots are a critical component of a rotational grazing system because it is an area where you can house horses when the pasture is not suitable for grazing. One of the problems in a dry lot is the accumulation of mud, especially during wet times or if you have certain soil types like clay. A high traffic pad really is a way to help mitigate mud. It encourages drainage when there's no vegetation to help absorb that moisture. The first step to installing a high traffic pad is to select where your high traffic pad is most needed. Common areas on the farm that may benefit from a high traffic pad include gates, laneways, where water sources are located, as well as where feeding stations are located. Each of these areas can be found within your dry lot. Sites should ideally slope between 4 and 6 degrees to improve drainage and steeper slopes may require reinforcement to maintain integrity. Now that you have identified your site, you can order supplies based on the desired size of your high traffic pad. The supplies you will need are a measuring tape, marking paint and flags, excavation equipment including shovels for small areas and detail work, and large equipment for larger jobs. Today we will be demonstrating how to use a skid loader with a bucket attachment for excavation and stone fill. You will also need geotextile fabric. Geotextile fabric comes in two varieties, woven and non-woven. Both are permeable to water, but the woven product is more durable, whereas the non-woven is more porous. Each product has their own advantages and should be selected based on your individual site needs. For this project, we are using a woven material due to its durability and the changing of landscape in our freeze-thaw cycles in Minnesota. Ensure to order enough product to cover the size of your high traffic pad twice for two layers. And when using multiple sections of fabric, be able to overlap each section by at least six inches. You will also need scissors for cutting your geotextile fabric. You will also need rakes and shovels for leveling out the area, and we recommend a vibratory plate compactor for compacting the stone layers. The next product you will need is the large stone product. Crushed limestone or a similar type of stone, approximately one and a half to one and three quarter inches in diameter, should cover at a four inch depth the space of your high traffic pad. Whenever ordering stone, be sure to consult with a local expert as terminology and, and availability varies by region. You will also need a smaller stone product, such as crushed stone or dirty pea gravel. The diameter of the small stone should be approximately 3 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch wide. This will also cover the area of the high traffic pad at a four inch depth. Be sure to make sure you order a product that has fines. You do not want a product with fines washed away or removed as this product will not compact well and may decompact over time. Now that all of your materials are ordered and assembled, you are ready to excavate. Start by marking out the total area of your high traffic pad by measuring and marking with paint and flags. Make sure to remove the flags before excavation. Excavate topsoil down eight inches across the entire area of the high traffic pad. Ensure that the base of the pad is level. Roll out your geotextile layer as the first layer of the pad. Be sure to overlap fabric if multiple sections are needed to cover the entire base of the pad. Fabric should always overlap by at least six inches. Ensure that the pad matches the size of the geotextile layer. Make sure that no edges of the geotextile are climbing the walls of the pad as these may be pawed by horses and become loose over time. 
Fill the high traffic pad with your larger stone product to a four inch depth. This is your second layer of the high traffic pad. Pack the layer with a vibratory plate compactor. If a plate compactor is not available, you can also use a commercial roller or larger farm equipment to pack the stone layers. Compacting is a key step to ensure that you have constructed a solid base and will minimize settling over time. Next, you will need to lay out the second layer of geotextile fabric, just as done for the base layer of the pad. For your last step, install the final layer of stone. This will be your smaller stone product. Fill to a four inch depth and pack with the vibratory plate compactor, commercial roller, or large farm equipment. If stone is not compacting well, mist with water to ensure that fines stick together when compacting. And there you have it, a high traffic pad that is ready for use. Let's review the key concepts from today's video. High traffic pads can help manage mud on horse farms. They consist of four layers of stone and geotextile fabric. They should be placed strategically only as needed on the farm in your most muddy areas. Manure should be removed regularly to prolong the life of the product and the top layer will need to be topped off with more stone product and also remember that installation should only be done under dry conditions.